everybody, how's it going out there? I am Michelle, welcome to my channel. Today we're gonna talk about shade. I know, you guys have been waiting for this. I am excited to present this for you guys. So we've been doing a series about different perennial pairings and landscape ideas, and today, this is the day. Today is the day that we're gonna talk about shade perennials and some of the great combinations that you can put together. They're gonna to have multiple seasons of interest, they're gonna have complementary foliage, and they're gonna have similar growing conditions, and they look fabulous together. So let's get right into it. So I'm pretty stoked about this because we actually trialed this last year in the store where we sold these and these are all proven winner recipes and they're what they call easy scape recipes and we had combinations that we grouped together with pictures so that people could take the whole group buy it take it home and plunk it in the ground they had this great design that they could do so the ones that i'm going to show you are the top five shade sellers that we had i think we had nine different ones that we sold but these were the top five so I thought I'd share those with you now well plants are more than just their flowers so in the shade you're really looking for texture and plant shape and the color of the foliage and so one of the ways to turn a good landscape into a great landscape is to have that foliage that really complements each other has different textures and colors and so the ones that I put together I think absolutely hit the mark on all of those points and it takes into account all of that the other thing we want these combinations to do is have a long window of looking good so all of the ones that have been put together look good together they look good together for a long time and that's one of the things you're looking for too most of them are very low maintenance and I do have one combination that is deer resistant Lastly, we want them to grow well together in similar garden conditions. We want them to all have the same light, soil, fertility, watering conditions. That makes it so that you have nice, sustainable landscaping and so that it makes your life easier because they all need the same thing. So let's go ahead and take a look at my first one right now. This first one is a pulmonaria or a longwort. This is the pink of blue. Now remember, all of these are from Proven Winners. I'm not going to say that every time. Okay, this one is deer and rabbit resistant, and it's got this nice elongated leaf on it with like these splotches of white. I love longwort. I think it is great in the garden. The flowers that you get on it are like a bonus, and it's called pink of blue because when the buds are closed, they're pink, and then as the flowers open, they're blue. So you always have this combination of blue and pink going on, and it's really super nice. Now, I cut the flowers off when they're done. I don't leave them on there. I just go give it a little haircut and just trim it up and make it look neat, and then it looks good the rest of the season. These are going to be deer and rabbit resistant, so that's a nice little bonus. 14 to 16 inches high, 18 to 20 inches wide, zone 3 through 9. Now, care tips. These grow best in filtered sun or part shade. And if it's dry out, I, they'll wilt. You'll know they need water because they'll wilt. I have mine actually positioned where they're getting just a tad bit too much sun. And I need to either create some shade for them or move them. Because I feel like I have to water them every day because they're wilting. And I think if they had more protection from that hot afternoon sun, even here in zone 5, I wouldn't have that problem. This next one is a hookra from the Dressed Up series called Ball Gown. It's got this beautiful, vibrant chartreuse color on it. The leaves aren't very big, but it's a really nice performer. It's a smaller hookra, only getting 12 to 14 inches high. Now, I have better luck with some of the green and chartreuse colored hookras than I do some of the colored ones, so I really like this one. It gets 20 to 24 inches wide, and it does grow in zone 4 through 9. Now, it does have a semi evergreen habit I don't cut mine back in the fall I leave them up I do cut the spent flowers off when they're done but what I do in the spring is I just pull that tattered or you know worn foliage off of it and clean them up and then they're good to go for the rest of the season so dressed up hookah ball gown love this one the next one in this grouping is the Crested Surf Japanese Painted Fern. And I used to always struggle and lose some of these every single year until someone told me that you don't cut them back. And you just wait till they start to emerge in the spring. And once you see the fronds six inches long, then you pull the old foliage off. I never knew that. And once I started doing that, I haven't lost one since. This is a really nice fern. And I love just the different colors that are on the leaves. 20 to 22 inches high, 28 to 32 inches wide zone three through eight this guy is absolutely beautiful so this grouping has four plants and this is the last one this is the pole let's see 
Pulmonium. Yes, I believe that's how you say it. It's a Jacob's Ladder. And this one is the Heaven Scent. It gets 18 to 24 inches high, 15 to 18 inches wide, grows in zone 3 through 7. Now, if you are in the south, you definitely have to protect uh, you have to provide shade for this guy in the afternoon. It does best in dappled shade. I don't know that this will ever do really well in heavy shade. Um, I've grown it in only dappled shade, and I have great luck with it. I get lots of flowers. I love the color of the foliage, and even when the flowers are done and I cut them off, it still looks great. Um, I do have to supplement water this one every once in a while, but last year I grew them, and I thought they were great. So, this is the four plants that is in this combination. Here you can see there's a planting guide that I've put on the screen. This would be a bed that would be 12 feet long and 7 feet deep. You can see that uh, A, which is the dark purple, is your pink blue palmaria. If you were going to do this planting in this size bed to have them all kind of touching and close together, you would need three, six, eight of the pulmonarias. If you were going to do the hookahs, you would need three, six, eight of those. And it looks like you're going to need of uh, the pulmonias, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and seven. So quite a few plants in this, but you can certainly space these out further if you want to. But if you really want that full look, this is how you would space it in the bed. And this is your watercolor rendition of what this would look like. Now, what's really cool is I will be taking all of these different combinations and putting them in a really long shade border that I'd be that I'm going to be putting together uh, sometime in the next coming up year. I don't know when it'll be, but I am going to do every one of these combinations and kind of run it down this really long border that I have. And I'm going to add some other things to make like a combination border so there's some backdrop to it uh, and layer it down. But that'll be really cool to see them actually planted. So I know that these were the top five sellers in my store as far as groupings. So let's go on to number two. Combination number two has four plants in it, the first one being a lungwort. Now, this one is called Spot On. The specs are pretty much the same as the first one that we talked about, the pink blue. It's deer and rabbit resistant, zone three through nine. I think the biggest difference is I actually think this one has a little more presence in the garden because the leaves aren't as, or the leaves are actually, I think, bigger. They're a little bit more round and a little bit longer, and I think it's a little more splotchy than the other one. So the other one, I, I look at it and I think it's a little more delicate. I look at this one and I think it's a little more bold, and you wouldn't think that until you saw them growing in pots side by side, and that's when you can really see the difference. But I do like this lung work, and so it is in this grouping. Let's go on to the next one. Evening Gown is another hoop row that's absolutely gorgeous. It's got this really super dark foliage. It's got a nice scalloped leaf on it, and it has really pretty flowers that come up over the top of it. This guy is another smaller one, only 12 to 14 inches high, maybe 20 inches wide. And again, just like all the hookahs, I just clean them off in the spring. But this looks absolutely fabulous paired with the other three perennials in this grouping. Again, in this grouping, we're going to use that Crested Surf Japanese Painted Fern. It is so beautiful. This is just, I think, the most gorgeous fern. All those different colors up those leaves. Oh, just fabulous. The last plant in this grouping is a hosta, and this guy is a stunner. This guy is Diamond Lake, and look at the ruffles on the edge of those leaves. And I do think that when you have more textured leaves on a hosta, it does make them a little bit more slug resistant. I mean, I don't know if it'll keep the slugs off, but I find that the ones that I have that are thicker, more rigid in my garden are the ones that are the least eaten. And so I feel like I don't have to bait those as much. This has a nice, really pretty blue-green leaf, and this is a fairly large hosta, so you want to make sure you give it plenty of room to grow. 17 inches high, but this thing can get 45 inches wide. So if you think about that, that's almost four feet. That's pretty big. This is an absolutely gorgeous hosta to pair with the other three perennials. Here's your planting guide. This is for a 12 by 7 foot bed, and again, it's going to take three of the hostas, eight of the painted ferns, four of the hookahs, and six of the lungwort. Sorry, I'm counting at the same time that I'm looking. Combination number three is going to have one of the new plant introductions from last year, the Astilbe Dark Side of the Moon, a hookra, and a hosta. So let's take a look at them. This Astilbe is, oh, I don't even know what to say about this Astilbe. I planted one last year, and all I can say is, 
Wow. It is totally awesome. It grows in sun or shade. Now, if you're going to plant it in the sun, you're going to have to water it like mad because the stilbies already want a little bit more water. Now, what I found with this one was I didn't have to go crazy watering it. I gave it a little extra water because I was getting it going. I only planted one, but I can't wait to put more of these in my landscape. They are getting 20 to 22 inches high, 24 inches wide, zone four through nine, deer and rabbit resistant, and look at those flowers on there. Those are really, truly this beautiful, deep purple kind of burgundy color, and the foliage is fabulous. Oh my God, I fell in love with this. I wish it wasn't so expensive. It is an expensive perennial, but hopefully as it's out longer, that price will come down. This is the hookah called Wildberry, and it really, truly is that vibrant. It is this in-your-face purple. It is gorgeous, and it's like electric. It like glows, especially when it's in the shade. Now pair that up with a chartreuse and a black like you have with the dark side of the moon. The flowers almost match the foliage on this. The pairings of the three of these, wait, wait till you see the hot stuff, together are fabulous. 8 to 14 inches high, 18 to 24 inches wide, growing in zone 4 through 9. Wildberry is phenomenal. Here's your chartreuse foliage. Pair that up with that electric purple and that dark foliage of the astilbe. And oh my goodness, the three of these together just, ah, oh, I can't wait to plant this. This is a fairly large hosta as well. This one is actually really tall, 30 inches. So that's like two and a half feet. And then it's going to get up to three feet wide. So that's pretty big. The flowers are lavender that come up off the top of it. And I'm not in love with those. I usually just cut them off. But this is a really, really nice color. And again, it's got that nice ridge and that nice texture going through the leaf. And I find with this one, I have one growing at my house. It didn't get eaten last year. So there's something to be said about that ridged foliage. All right, here's your planting guide. Five of the hostas, two, four, six of the astilbe dark side of the moon, and then seven of the wild berry hookras. Absolutely gorgeous. I can't wait to plant this. Even this watercolor rendition looks good. So I just imagine what that's going to look like in the ground. Combo number three is my Deer Proof Combo. I only have one in all the groupings because I just went off my sales skew and picked the top five sellers that I had in the store. And I thought if my customers liked them, maybe you guys would too. So let's go ahead and talk about the Deer Resistant one. Three perennials in this grouping. Brunnera Jack of Hearts. Now, I planted three of these in my garden last year, so next year they'll be on their second year. I always used to plant the Jack Frost, but then I saw the Jack of Diamonds and went, wow, the leaves on this thing are huge, and the plant itself is pretty big for a Brunnera, 16 to 18 inches high and up to three feet wide. That's really big for a Brunnera, and look at that variegated foliage on there. That is beautiful. So this is the first plant in our trio. Oh, and there's a little bonus with this. This thing is covered with little bitty blue flowers in the spring. And you don't grow it for the flowers. They're like a bonus that you get. You grow this for the foliage because it's so fabulous. All right, we're going to pair it up again with the hook or wild berry. So again, you can use this one or you could use another one too. There's one called uh, Midnight Rose. It's not quite so electric, but it's a nice one too. We pair it up with the Heaven Scent Jacob's Ladder. This is one that I've already highlighted in an earlier grouping, but the three of these together are deer resistant. So if you need that because you've got deer pressure, I would recommend trying this combo together. So this would be for a fairly shallow bed. So this is for a nine feet long by five foot deep bed. And you're looking at five of the Jacob's Ladder, seven of the Hookras, and six of the Jack of Diamonds. Now I'm telling you, silver foliage in the shade can really brighten the shade up. And it, you watch, there's going to be a lot of silver foliage this year. It's going to be like the foliage of the year. In annuals, perennials, you're going to see a lot of it. You just wait and see. My combo number five has really nice plants in it. And if you're looking for a plant that's got a little bit of height to it, this might be the one for you. I never knew what goat's beard was until I grew it. And then when I grew it, I fell in love with it. So let's take a look at this combo. There it is in all its glory. This thing is gorgeous. This is about four feet high and it gets 32 inches wide. I've actually grown this at the base of a maple tree. And you know how maple trees are like water hogs. This grew at the base of a maple tree and did really well. It gets those beautiful goat's beard plumes on it. That's why it's called goat's beard. Um, it's going to grow 
in zone three through seven. So this is something that's gonna really give you some height if you need that. Now, if you live in the north, you can actually grow this in full sun. You might have to add a little bit of water, uh, but watch it for scorching. Probably like more like morning sun would be better than all day hot afternoon sun, uh, but it does best in partial shade where it can have some relief. The next plant in this grouping is another Brunnera, but this is the Queen of Hearts. Now the Queen of Hearts gets 16 to 18 inches high, 28 to 36 inches wide. And this is a good representation of what all those little blue flowers look like. Now the leaves on this can get just as big as the Jack of Hearts, but I think they're a little more heart shaped and they have more silver on them. I think that it's more pronounced and I think that the green veining is a lot more narrow on the Queen of Hearts versus the Jack of Diamonds. I like both of them though. And I think you can interchange them in any given situation, but this is the next perennial in the grouping. The last one in this grouping is a hosta. This is a smaller hosta. This is an autumn frost and these are really good front of the border. Tuck them in uh, hostas and they really do have that beautiful outer edge that's yellow and that nice beautiful green in the center. I have three or four of these growing at the house and I really do like them. I think they're big enough that I can start splitting them so I like to get a lot of these and just move them around. This is a smaller hosta, only 12 to 14 inches high, only 24 inches, two feet wide, zone three through nine. And so one of the things that you might have read all the way along the way as I was talking about all the hostas is it really is, even if you don't clean up anything else in your garden, it really is a good idea to clean up hosta leaves after they're done dying back in the fall. The frost took them out. It is a good practice to clean those up because they do harbor a lot of things that you probably don't want in your garden. Um, a lot of things you can leave up. Hostas, they don't look good in the winter and the foliage just looks blah. So just clean them up. Another bed that's five by nine. In the back of the bed, we've got the goat's beard. We got five of those. And then we're gonna intermix the hostas with the Brunnera. And it looks like you've got six of the Brunnera and seven of the hostas. So this is a nice looking bed. See, isn't that really pretty with the height of that goat's beard behind? And then I just love the two colors in front of it. I just think it looks so pretty together. So I'm definitely planting this one in my border. And I might actually run the whole middle of it with this one. And then bring the other ones down the other side. So that it kind of has this one in the middle. And then take the other ones and like anchor them as a mirror going down the long bed. I think that'll look really cool. So there you have it. Five groupings of perennials that you can put together and grow in the shade. So this is a starting place for you to be able to put some designs together and create something all your own that you will love in your yard. So I'm Michelle. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, everybody.